So uh, continuing with module seven, and uh, in this, uh, we have our learning target. Uh, I can write a one step addition and subtraction inequalities from real world situations and use inverse operations to solve the inequalities, okay? So as you can see, uh, our topic, uh, this is again module seven, uh, lesson 7.6, uh, write and solve one step addition and subtraction inequalities. And the vocabulary words that we are going to use uh, in this, of course, you've got to know what an inequality is. Um, and then we are going to talk about the subtraction property of inequality and the addition property of inequality. So um, if you've understood equations, uh, it, you know, the methods of solving inequalities are uh, exactly the same thing, but instead of an equal to sign, we are going to have an inequality. Okay, so uh, when we talk about what is an inequality, okay, so these are the symbols that you will find in inequality. An inequality is nothing, it is uh, besides, a, it's, you know, a mathematical sentence. So an equality is a mathematical sentence that compares quantities. Okay, so it compares quantities. So uh, if I look at these are the symbols that I'm going to have uh, for inequalities, okay, is less than, is greater than, is less than or equal to, is greater than or equal to. So uh, basically these are the different uh, symbols that you'll find. So if I say is less than or fewer than, so for example, uh, if I take the number four, uh, and that is less than eight, right? So four is less than eight. You cannot say eight is less than eight because that's not correct. So any number uh, which is less than eight uh, can be a solution of this inequality and it is going to make it true, all right? So if I say uh, is greater than or is more than, so I can say three is greater than negative two, right? So a uh, zero is greater than negative two, 10 is greater than negative two. So all the numbers uh, that are going to be greater than negative two. So that's basically what this is, is greater than uh, or is more than, okay? Uh, then if I say is less than or equal to, okay? So uh, if I say um, negative six is less than, or equal to one, that is correct, okay? Because is negative six less than one? Yes, is it equal to? No, but it is less than one. Uh, what I could have done for less than equal to, if I said over here, five is less than equal to five. So if I look at that, uh, is five less than five? No, but five is equal to five. So it falls in this category also, okay? Um, there are other words that describe this, where we say uh, is no more than, is at most. Uh, you've got to be at most 120 pounds to ride this roller coaster. So that means you cannot weigh more than 120 pounds. At most means that's the maximum it can be. And everything uh, less than that uh, will be completely fine. Uh, that person can ride the roller coaster. So I'm just giving you an example, okay? So uh, the last one is greater than or equal to. So if I say nine and six, is nine greater than six? Absolutely. Is it equal to? No, but it is greater than. So it does fit in that category. Um, <clears throat> if I say negative seven is greater than or equal to negative seven. So that will also fit in this category because even though negative seven is not greater than negative seven because they are equal. So that is why <clears throat> negative seven is equal to negative seven. So this is also going to fall in this category, okay? Um, so it is greater than or equal to is no less than <clears throat> or is at least, you've got to be at least 16 years old uh, to drive a car, okay? So when I'm saying that, that means 16 or above 
uh, you know, you get that license, okay, to drive. So you've got to be 16 or greater in age. So that is why you, uh, you've got to be at least 16 to drive. So I'm just giving you uh, some of these real world examples that you uh, find, okay? So these are the different um, symbols. These are the different phrases for inequalities. And now let's start talking about graphing and uh, solving addition and subtraction inequalities, okay? <clears throat> so, uh, let's do the first one. Um, and I am just going to remove this really quick. <clears throat> okay, so let's look at graphing of inequalities. I uh, just want to quickly talk about uh, you know, when uh, it's a closed circle, open circle, again, this is stuff we had done last year, but this is a refresher. So if I'm saying X is less than 3 and 5 tenth, okay? So my first suggestion is before you start graphing, you want to give a value to the X so that we don't make any mistakes. So if I look at X, is 4 less than 3 and 5 tenth? No, it is greater. Is three less than three and five tenth? Yes. Uh, two, one, all of these numbers are less than three and five tenth. So you want to just put something like this. These are the numbers which are less than, uh, you know, three and five tenth. Okay. So as I can see, since you're going three, two, one, zero, negative one, etc., it's telling me that this graph is going to be going to the left because all of those numbers are going to be solutions of this inequality. Because is negative 1 less than 3 and 5 tenths? Absolutely. Is negative 100 less than 3 and 5 tenths? Absolutely. So I am going to make a number line. Okay. Uh, let's say this is 0. Uh, please show your, uh, you know, parts over here that are on the graph uh, in equal intervals. Um, and... Yeah, numbers should not be hanging in space, so please make sure that they are labeled properly, okay? So here um, is a number line, and if I'm saying 3 and 5 tenth, where would this be on the number line? So 3 and 5 tenth is going to be between 3 and 4, which is over here, okay? So now it says that it is less, so is 3 and, so this is 3 and 5 tenth over here, okay? So is it equal to 3 and 5 tenth? No, it is less. So that is why 3 and 5 tenth is not included in that. So that is why we are going to have an open circle. We're going to have an open circle to show that 3 and 5 tenth, uh, it starts there, but that is not part of it because it's not equal to that. But then the arrow goes to the left. That means every number to the left of 3 and 5 tenth is going to be a part of this solution. Okay, so this is how we graph x is less than 3 and 5 tenth. Okay, now let's look at the next one. Um, and we this one shows that we have x is greater than or equal to negative 1. So let's start with what is equal to negative 1. Equal means it's the same number. So we have negative 1. Okay. Now, what is greater than negative 1? Uh, 0 is greater than negative 1. 1 is greater than negative 1. 2 is greater. 3 is greater and so on. Right? And the same thing here, it was like, you know. So that means this graph is going to be going to the right because the numbers on the right are going to be greater, okay? So we are again going to make a number line, okay? And let's say this is zero. Uh, to the left of zero, we have negative integers, okay? To the right, we have positive integers, and this graph is saying less than equal to, uh, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, negative 1 is less than or equal to. So x is greater than or equal to negative 1, right? So therefore, we are going to go to negative 1 
and this is negative one over here on the graph and we are going to circle it but this time since negative one is also a part of the solution we are going to completely color that in okay so this is a closed circle this is a closed circle that tells me that negative one is also part of the solution and then all the numbers to the right are going to be a part of the solution so i'm going to draw a line on the number line and then i'm just going to put an arrow telling me that everything to the right of negative one is going to be a solution to this inequality so look at the difference where the equal to sign is not there it is an open circle where the equal to sign uh, is also included and greater the it is a closed circle so that's how you graph an inequality so uh, just so that uh, you know we know what to do when we are now solving okay uh, so solving basically means uh, in an inequality we are finding the values for the variable uh, that make the inequality true okay so uh, in solving we are going to start uh, with uh, examples where we have the subtraction uh, or the addition property of inequality and basically that means that we are adding or subtracting uh, the same number from both sides of the inequality just like we had addition subtraction properties of equality uh, where we were adding subtracting from both sides of the equation now it's an inequality so we are just adding and subtracting the same number from both sides of the inequality because whatever i do on one side of the inequality i've got to do exactly the same thing on the other side of the inequality okay so um <clears throat> let's go ahead and start uh, with some uh, examples uh, of solving uh, and then graphing okay so <clears throat> All right. So let's say uh, I have a problem. It says a four tenth plus y. We are going to solve and graph now. Solve and graph an inequality. So uh, you know, if I have four tenth plus y. Okay, uh, is less than equal to is less than equal to negative nine and six tenth. Okay, so we are going to look at this, and we are going to do the same thing that we did with equations. Okay, and uh, remember again, as we did in equations, it goes in the opposite order of the order of operations in this case. Um, you know, so we are going to look over here. Okay, we have four tenth. Uh, we are going to try to combine the like terms. Um, and what is the opposite of 4 tenth? It's negative 4 uh, tenth, right? So we are using inverse operations. And so we are going to use the subtraction property of equality to subtract 4 tenth from both sides. Okay, because whatever I do on one side of the inequality, I've got to do exactly the same thing on the other side of the inequality. So uh, we are going to do a minus 4 tenth whatever i do on this side of the inequality i've got to do the same thing on the other side of the inequality okay and so 4 tenth minus 4 tenth is zero and so y is less than or equal to uh, and then we look at this same sign so we are going to add them because it's the same sign okay six plus four is ten and we have the decimal this goes up so we have 10 and the negative sign okay so basically y is less than equal to negative 10 okay so now once we have this you can always uh, check the inequality uh, by doing 4 plus negative 10 so if, if i was checking my work just to make sure that it is correct so we have 4 tenth plus y is less than equal to negative 9 and 6 tenth. What did we say y was? We said y is equal to, um, is less than or equal to negative 10. So we are going to go ahead and do 4 tenth plus 
uh, we said this is negative 10, but that is what y is, is less than, equal to negative 9 and 6 10. And so obviously, uh, now these are opposite signs, so we are going to subtract, and I get negative 9 and 6 10 is less than or equal to negative 9 and 6 10. So that's definitely a solution. Even though negative 9 and 6 10 is not less than negative 9 and 6 10, but it is definitely equal. So that is a solution to this inequality. So that is the way to check the work. So exactly how we were doing it in equations, we're going to do the same thing with the inequality. Now, in order to graph this, uh, I am looking at uh, what it's saying. It's saying y is less than or equal to 10. So once I have this, I'm going to look at what is equal to negative 10. It would be negative 10. Okay. What is less than negative 10? So it's going to be negative 11, negative 12. Remember uh, backwards, the integers get smaller and smaller and smaller. So that means that this graph is going to go to the left. Okay. So I am going to take my number line, okay, and let's say I have um, 0, negative 10, negative 20, negative 30, negative 40, uh, you know, so I'm labeling it like this. And then uh, I'm seeing that y is less than or equal to. So since negative 10 is included, it's going to be a closed circle. Okay. And every number to the left is going to be a solution to this inequality. Whether it's negative 11, negative 12, negative 13, negative 40, negative 100, all of these are going to be a solution to this inequality. So that's how we graph it. Okay. Um, let's do a problem uh, where. So my next problem, uh, negative 6 is greater than, negative 6 is greater than or equal to n minus 5, n minus 5, okay? So looking at this again, we've written out the inequality. We are going to solve it, um, then we are going to graph it, okay? So um, n minus 5 so I have the minus 5 over here. So I am going to do the opposite of subtraction, which is the addition property of inequality. And I am going to add 5 to both sides. Okay, so plus 5 and plus 5. Because whatever I do on one side of the inequality, I do the same thing on the other. 5 minus 5 gives me 0. n is less than or equal to... And so that means that anything here is going to be greater than n. Okay? So opposite signs. So we are going to subtract the absolute values and give the sign of the bigger number. So 6 minus 5 is 1. Sign in front of 6 is negative. So this is my answer. Okay? Now, um, the solution, you know, you can always write it either like this. Uh, you can also write it as n is less than equal to negative 1. So you can write it this way, you can write it that way. Uh, it basically uh, means the same thing because negative 1 is basically greater uh, than that. Okay, so I <clears throat> just wanted to show you that both of these are correct when you're writing it. Now, uh, in order to, you know, uh, solve this, <clears throat> all I'm doing is I'm taking the original equation, okay? And uh, the original equation is what? Negative 6 uh, is greater than or equal to n minus 5. So negative 6 is greater than equal to, what did we say n was? n was negative 1, right? And, oh, no, oh, no. okay, and is greater than. So we can take any number. So what I'm going to do is I am uh, going, I can replace anything. So let's say I choose what's the number uh, which, you know, where negative one is greater than this. 
So think of the number line. Everything that means n is going to be less than negative or equal to. So I could take negative 1 because negative 1 is equal. I could take a number which is less than. So negative 1, uh, everything negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. These are all numbers which are less than negative 1, right? So I'm just going to take one of these. Let's say I take negative 3. Uh, just to check my work, okay? So if I say negative 3 minus 5, okay? So what am I going to get? I'm going to get negative 6 is greater than, equal to. Same signs I'm going to add, and I get negative 8. So is negative 6 uh, greater than negative 8? Absolutely. Is it equal to? No, but it is definitely greater, okay? So that is why... This inequality, this this uh, solution is correct. Okay. Now, in order to solve it, as I said, uh, you know, this is going to, uh, you know, is it going to have a closed dot or a closed circle? Absolutely. So, n should be less than or equal to negative one. So, and we just did this to find the values, and I told you that's the first thing to do, so we don't make a mistake as to which direction the graph is going. So I am going to have my number line 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, etc. And then all the numbers to the left of negative 1 are going to be solutions. But I'm also going to see that negative 1 is included. So it's a closed dot or a closed circle. And everything to the left is a solution to this inequality. And so that's how I am graphing it. Okay. Um, then uh, let's go ahead and, uh, you know, we are just going to use a real world example of writing and solving addition, or, you know, or subtraction inequalities. So... Let's say I have a question. Uh, Dylan can spend at most $18 to ride go-karts and play games at the state fair. And suppose the go-karts cost $5.50. Write and solve an inequality to determine the amount Dylan can spend on games if he rides go-karts once and do the interpretation of the solution. So at most, that means, it said at most 18. That means 18 can be the maximum amount that you have because it said at most, okay? So 18 can be the maximum amount that you can have. So can spend at most $18 because he doesn't have more than $18. So that's the maximum he can spend. That means everything else is going to be less than or equal to because 18 is the maximum he can spend, okay? So everything else is going to be less than or equal to $18. So just think of what it says at most. That means it's the maximum you can have. That means everything else is going to be less than that. Okay. So, uh, so cost of the go-kart ride plus cost of the games is going to be less than or equal to the total amount that he can spend. And let uh, me represent the cost of the games as X. And, uh, you know, suppose the cost of the go-karts is $5.50. So, which is 5 and 5 tenth, right? Uh, plus, what, what is left? Plus x has to be less than or equal to 18. So, now we have an inequality written out. So, once I have the inequality written out, then all I'm doing is I'm going to go ahead and solve it. And I am going to see that I have 5 and 5 tenth over here. So, I am going to... Do the subtraction property of inequality. I am going to subtract 5 and 5 tenths from both sides of the inequality. Please remember to align your decimals at same place values so we don't make mistakes. And that means I'm going to have this and a 0 over here because I am doing subtraction. Okay? So um, x is going to be less than or equal to, and I get 12 and 
5 tenth. Okay, so less than 12 and 5 tenth. So this means that that's the amount of money that he has uh, to uh, left over to saw, uh, to actually spend. Okay, because maximum that he had was eighteen dollars, and he's already spent five dollars fifty cents on the go karts. So this is the amount twelve dollars fifty cents that he can uh, spend more uh, before reaching that maximum limit. Okay, so if I was to graph this, I could see x is equal to how much? $12.50. What is less than uh, 12? What is, you know, I'm thinking of whole numbers. Less than 12, uh, you know, uh, I have what? 11, 10, 9, 8, right? So 10, 9, 8. So as I can see, all of those numbers are going to be le uh, less. So I know that uh, the graph is going to go to the left of 12 and 5, 10. So let's say I have 12, I have 13, I have 11, I have 10, 9, 8, etc. Okay, so if it's saying 12 and 5 tenth, that means this is going to be over here. Okay, and is 12 and 5 tenth included? Yes, because it's, this is less than or equal to 12 and 5 tenth. So this is going to be a closed dot or a closed circle. Okay, and everything to the left is a solution to this inequality. So the most Dylan can spend on games is $12.50. Okay. Um, let's do one last problem uh, where we are going to use uh, subtraction inequalities. Uh, using a word problem so that all you're doing is writing it out like this and then solving it. Okay. All right. So the question is, Caleb owns two types of dogs. The difference in height of his terrier and his great Dane is at least 25 inches. I think what you said, at least. Okay, so that means 25 inches at least, that means the minimum. Okay, at least means this is the minimum amount. Think about what I said earlier, at least 16 to drive. So 16 or greater, right? So that means 16 was the minimum age for a person to drive. So same thing over here. It said at least 25. Okay. So Caleb's terrier has a height of six and one fourth inches. Write and solve an inequality to determine the possible height of the Great Dane. Okay. So Let's say Great Dane height, I am going to say is H, okay? And then minus the height of the terrier, which was six and one fourth, okay? And we said this is the minimum, so that means this is going to be greater than or equal to 25. There we go. So now that we've set this up, uh, we are just going to solve the inequality. Um, so as we can see, we have minus 6 and 1 fourth. So the inverse operation is going to be the addition property of inequality. I am going to add 6 and 1 fourth on both sides of the inequality. Okay, I'm going to add 6 and 1 fourth on both sides of the inequality. So therefore, this is zero and H is going to be greater than or equal to, uh, we have 25 plus six, that gives me 31, okay? And one fourth, 31 and one fourth, okay? So if I am looking at this, uh, the height of the Great Dane is at least 31 and one fourth. So when I am going to graph this, 
uh, I, I'm going to look at, hey, what is the same as 31 and 1 fourth? It's going to be 31 and 1 fourth. Okay, what is greater than 31 and 1 fourth? Uh, I can, you know, use a, a 31, 1 half, uh, 32, 33, 34, right? So 32, 33, uh, etc. So as I can see that my graph is going to be moving to the right. So if I have my numbers listed and I have 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, uh, etc. And it says 31 and 1 fourth, which is going to be like this is 31 and a half. So 31 and 1 fourth and this is 3 fourth. So this one over here is 31 and 1 fourth. Okay. And since it is including 31 and 1 fourth, it is going to be a closed circle over here. And we are going to do a closed circle. Okay, and then everything to the right of this is going to be a solution. All right, so <clears throat> the height of the Great Dane is at least 31 and 1 fourth inches. All right, so again, <clears throat> an inequality is nothing but a mathematical sentence that is uh, comparing quantities. And in this lesson, we basically use the uh, one step addition and subtraction inequalities, how to solve them, and then how to graph them. Have a fabulous day.